Good morning. Shabbat shalom. Um, you know when you're in ministry, you live in a fishbowl, and when you're in this place, it's an unbelievable fishbowl. So yes, I have new water. Somebody's going to write me. I tried small water, I didn't get any smarter. I tried crazy water, I didn't get any crazier. But this is, um, this water's from Norway. Anybody know what Norway invented? Vikings. Viking? Vikings. The Vikings. As in Minnesota? <laughs> they invented downhill skiing. What else? 1934, they invented the cheese slicer. Anything? I asked somebody this the other day, you know what they said to me? You're going to love this because you're a professor. They invented the salmon. I said, no, God invented the salmon. <laughs> no, but listen, it gets better. I was once in Tennessee preaching at a church, and we went to like an Applebee's or something, you know, one of the finer restaurants in Tennessee, and I said to the waiter, I said, is the salmon, you were with me. I'm not, I, you guys think I make this stuff up. Every story I tell you is absolutely, positively 100% true. He, I said, is the salmon fresh? He said, oh yeah. So I said, fresh salmon's from Alaska and, and, and Norway. This is Tennessee. He goes, oh, it's fresh, pal. We just got the box in yesterday from Georgia. <laughs> Listen, we just got the box in yesterday from Georgia. Oh, the famous Georgian salmon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have 21 verses to, to go over today and teach on. So what psalm am I going to read? Nope. <laughs> See, you done put God in a box. You, 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 you got to realize, even though religion doesn't realize this, and most Christians are very religious, you cannot put God in a box. No matter how big your box is, it's not big enough. And so there are some basic doctrinal truths. But then, if you try to have a formula for God, you're going to come up short every time. Yeah. So uh, if you have your Bibles with you, which would be a miracle, um, I'm going to read Psalm 2. And just to let you know, you know, every psalm is a song and it's based on something. Every, every, every song that's ever been written is based on something, based on some truth or experience. And I would have to tell you that this is very blatant. This is just not my opinion. But this, this song takes place, it's very prophetic, obviously. It takes place immediately prior to the glorious reign of Messiah. Doesn't that sound like a good thing? right prior to his to his reign toward the very end of the tribulation okay and and you'll see why it says why are the nations in an uproar the people's grumbling in vain see without without knowing the context these these songs sadly enough are taken out of context and used for our own purposes and then we create a theology that really isn't accurate the earth's kings are taking positions Leaders conspiring together against Adonai and his anointed. What's going on? Right? Now you get it? Because, right? It's, it's simple, right? You've got these nations coming together, a federation of rulers and nations that are, that are going to all unite till the end of the tribulation in a, in a very passionate determination to prevent Messiah from taking the reins of world government. You got a revised Roman Empire. We know this is the fourth beast, and they're going to come, a federation, and come against Yeshua. It says, against Adonai, the Lord, and his anointed. Who's his anointed? Christ and Messiah means anointed. That's what it means. So they're coming against God and his anointed, Yeshua. They cry, let's break their fetters. Let's throw off their chains. Very, very, very aggressive. It's going to be World War III. We, we know this, just don't know when. Now we get God's reaction to it. It says, he who sits in heaven, who's that? 
God laughs. If your God is laughing about this, why aren't you? Why are you all... I've never met so many people talking about politics these days. And the, and the beautiful thing is, they don't even know what they're talking about because nobody knows what goes on behind closed doors. You know what the new trinity in Christianity is? Money, sports, and politics. Mine will always be the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So God says he laughs. Adonai looks at them in derision. Then in his anger, he rebukes them. Terrifies them in his fury. Quote, I myself have installed my king in Zion. Who's that? Yeshua. He's coming to be king over Israel. His throne will be in Jerusalem. It's not going to be in Macon. Although some people don't believe that. It's not going to be in Wittenberg. It's not going to be in Rome. Nice places, but his throne is going to be in Jerusalem. And once again, he's going to be recognized as the king of the Jews, the king of Israel. God says, quote, in verse 6, I myself have installed my king on Zion, my holy mountain. Guys, the fulfillment of this, this is written 3,000 years ago. The fulfillment is about as certain as if it's already taken place. He is the king of Israel, just a lot of people don't realize it. But it's as good as done. You follow? Done. As far as I'm concerned, he's sitting on his throne right now. Their boasts, these nations, these powerful nations like Russia and China and Iran, their boasts, you know what that's like to God, their threats? It's like the sound of the squeak of a mouse against the lion. If that's the way God feels, and this is your God, how should you feel about it? The sound of a squeak against the lion. Isn't that good? Isn't that exciting? Doesn't that give you some sense of peace? Now Yeshua speaks, verse 7. How do you know? Quote, I will proclaim the decree. Adonai said to me, God the Father said to me, you are my son. Hello. Today I became your father. Ask of me and I will make the nations your inheritance. The whole wide world will be your possession. God has promised Yeshua universal dominion. The government will sit on his shoulders. Guys, look, I I know everybody's very political. I could care less who's in, okay? Okay? You know how you know a politician's lying? His lips are moving. Now we have to vote. Thank God we have a democracy and everybody votes based on whatever they want. Right? It's really a very selfish vote if you think about it. My vote is for Yeshua. It don't matter who's in. My vote's for Yeshua. I know he's on his throne, ruling and reigning, and nothing gets by his desk unless he puts his seal of approval on it. You will break them with an iron rod. What? Good old Yeshua? Yes, he is going to come back as promised, and he's going to deal with insubordination and rebellion and shatter them like a clay pot. Yeah, there is a time. This is the time for God's mercy. But should you deny that? It's going to be awful. Absolutely awful. When when people tell me, when they try to break up the Bible in Old and New Testaments, which is ridiculous, and they tell me God's a God of wrath, they obviously haven't read the book of Exodus in the Old Testament. They say God's a God of wrath. I'm sure you've heard this growing up in church. And then God's a God of grace in the New Testament. Really? Did you ever read the book of Revelation? Where the blood is up to the horse's bridle? Who do you think is going to be riding the horse? God is a God of of mercy and justice. And sadly enough, because he's a God of justice, insubordination 
and rebellion has to be judged. It has to be, otherwise there's no justice. But isn't it good for you and I, if you are here today, blood bought, that his love provided what his holiness demanded? Isn't that amazing? It's not about whether you got some good news this week or you got a job promotion or your kid got into a college they want to get into. Forget that. We have a reason to celebrate every dang day of our life. Now, last three verses, it's the voice of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that neat? The Father speaks, the Son speaks, and the Holy Spirit speaks right in old Psalm 2. Therefore, kings, be wise. Be warned, you judges of the earth. It's, a, it's an evangelistic appeal from the heart. Serve Adonai with fear. Rejoice, but with trembling. Show your respect before a holy God. Kiss the son, lest he be angry. Kiss the son, and I'm talking his feet. And you perish along the way when suddenly his anger blazes. To trust in the Lord is the most sane, logical, and reasonable thing a human being can do. To disbelieve is about as irrational and insane a thing a person could do. And it ends just absolutely beautifully. I can almost put a question mark there, but it's not. It's a statement. But it says, how blessed are all who take refuge in him. Amen. Hallelujah, no? Amen. Yeah, yeah we're going to have um, some fun today. And when I mean fun, I mean, you know, a God time, not a good time. It's going to be a God time where we're going to draw closer to the Lord. We might be delivered from some things. We might be convicted of some things. We might need to repent of some things, but it's all within the realm of God's presence. It's all about getting closer to God. It's all about leaving here today a little bit more. I don't know how much more. I don't care as long as it's something a little bit more like Yeshua. Everybody wants to lose weight today, right? Well, you know, we need to lose some flesh too. And I'm hoping that we leave some behind here when we leave these doors today. Amen? Yeah. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful opportunity to come together. Thank you, thank you, thank you that um, we could draw closer to you, that this is what you want. You, you, you want us. You really want us. It's not a matter of need. You obviously don't need us. But it's, e it's even better. You want us. You want us. I mean, that's a beautiful thing when it's not like you need your kids. You want them. You need your wife. You want her. Man, a desire of the heart. Absolutely stunning, Father. And so we come into your throne room respectfully, but also boldly knowing that you want us. It's a great feeling. It's the best feeling. And we're honored to be here. We're happy to be here. Bottom line, we're delighted to be here. And I know that we are going to praise you the way you deserve to be praised. I know you're going to worship you the way you deserve to be worshipped. And because you're going to get all the glory, you're going to be real happy. And we're happy about that. Be blessed, Father. In Yeshua's name we pray. Shabbat Shalom, guys.